Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and you are hopefully watching me in black and white right now because today's film, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title and if you've read any of it, the description, I make my own version of the Colourpop Wild Nothing palette which is meant to be inspired by cactus plants. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Colourpop. I love their prices. I really like the quality of their shadows. Not as keen on their matte liquid lips, they're a bit Sahara Desert, but satin ones are good. Glosses are quite nice too. But that Wild Nothing palette was wildly nothing like a cactus plant. See what I did there? Oh, did you? Oh. It's the benefit of having been up since four o'clock in the morning because you can't sleep. <laughs> so you want to find out exactly which shades I've got here, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and what I'm waffling about this time round, then my friends, as ever, you've got the best seat in the house. As I've said for some considerable time, oft here echoed on less imaginative channels but am now accompanied by Sammy the Sloth Straw to reinforce the point grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. It is 8 o'clock in the morning. It is blisteringly hot already. So you're probably asking, so why have you got a cardigan on over the top of your vest if you're blisteringly hot? <laughs> because I have the habit of falling out the side of these vests and that's not what my YouTube channel's about. Um, You will have seen the palette I've created, hopefully in black and white in the intro. So I'm not going to show you it just yet. I'm going to put some pictures up here. The first one is of this Colourpop, uh, what did they call it, Wild Nothing was it? Wild something or other, wasn't it? Yeah, wild nothing. Which they said was a cactus inspired. Is it me or is that really washed out palette? Have they never seen? flowering cacti. Let me put some pictures up to show you how beautiful flowering cacti are. Makes that palette look a bit crap, eh? So I decided Inspired by cacti, I would create my own version. This is the cover that I designed for it. I 
and this in a MAC Z palette thing is my palette. Let me talk you through the different shades. Let's open that. I'm going to start here and work my way across the rows. Okay. So we start off with flashing lights from Coloured Rain and Lemon Drop by Coloured Rain. So shimmer and a matte. We then have two makeup obsession shadows. The orange is called Storyteller and the pink is Champion. Continuing down onto the next row, that first bright blue is a makeup obsession and it's Happy Tears. The middle two, the teal, just yeah, it is okay. The middle two, the teal and the kind of lavender shade, are both NYX shadows. But unfortunately, I didn't realise at the time when I bought them, NYX don't put the names on the back of their individual shadows and I can't find those shadows on their site now so I don't know what they were called sorry about that then the purple on the end is another makeup obsession one and it's icon coming down to the final row the greens starting off with uh, a makeup geek obviously it's an old one because it's in a round pan not square and that's sure thin, sure as in um, beach, S H O R E. The square, beautiful shimmery green, is from Lethal Cosmetics, and it's the shade Vertex. Then the dark green shimmer is Makeup Obsessions Excite and the final shade here is Colourpop Team Captain so this to me far more resembles Cacti than that washed out Colourpop one So you know I want to put some of these on my lids, right? Okay. Uh, this is still a teaching channel by virtue of that, along with my chronic pain and because of how hot it is. Already. And before you come at me saying, oh, they get it much hotter over here in America. Yes, but our, our houses are designed different to yours. Our houses are designed to keep heat in because we have more cold days than hot and we don't have aircon or central air we just have windows and facing a main road like I do out the front can't have the window open because of the traffic fumes coming in that and the fact the neighbours planted a huge great bush underneath their window right at the corner which attracts a load of bees. So if I open my window, I get bees coming in and I'm allergic. So. <sighs> it's hot. Expect melty brain moments. Um, but because I want beginners to be able to keep up with me and people with chronic pain like myself, I go at a slower speed. If that's too slow for you, there is a speed widget, feel free to use it. As part of my teaching element of the channel, I like to include the difference between deep set and hooded lids. 
I see so many people getting them confused. Even really big beauty gurus. And it's understandable. Because the way that the makeup wears through the day is very similar with hooded and deep set eyes. But the application process needs to be different. So, I'm going to insert a clip just here talking you through how to work out which type of eye you have and the workarounds for each eye. If you've not seen my tutorials before, I zoom very close in so you only see my eyes on screen. And I'll be back at the other end of the clip to play with my version of the Wild Nothing palette. See you at the other end. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. 
Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. For those of you wondering, yes, I did stick a dye on my hair. It's one of these wash in, wash out ones. Just to tint the glitter hairs a little bit. So, if you're sensing a bit of auburn, you're absolutely right. And so there's still a little bit of staining on my scalp. <laughs> Oopsie! Right, sorry I'll try and cut some of the yawns out, but two hours sleep catches up with a girl when she's 46. Now, I'm going to start off with a fluffy blending brush, but an oval fluffy blending brush because I want control about where I'm placing the shadow. I may even decide to go down to using a really tapered one like this. Um, I haven't quite made my line up yet. So, just to show you the difference in sizes. And obviously I want to create a nice pretty look. So hold the brush right at the very end and we're going to start off by doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending which is basically natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and reverse turns to come back again and the reason we do that is I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves but I know 20 year olds that have always been slim that have this issue. It can just be genetic. And if you do the windshield wiper version, your skin can fold over on itself like that, and then you get stripes, like a barcoding or pinstriping. But by doing the Viennese Waltz blend, we are gently manoeuvring our lid round both in a clockwise and an anti-clockwise direction which means you shouldn't get any white bits. Okay. I'm going to start off, I think, with the teal, the NYX one that I don't have a name for. This is a, a satin. So I'm just going to make sure I tap off well to try and minimise the fallout. Now I'm going to start just above where my natural crease is. Always start on the outside because if you wallop down a little bit too much pigment it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. very lightly start popping this colour down so how's your day been today has it been a good one I hope it has if it hasn't been good I hope tomorrow's a better one for you and if you're at the start of your day well I hope it is fab I'm just building this colour up. I much prefer to tap off really, really well and then build colour up than put too much on and then have to work to blend it out. I've actually seen quite a few people do this, as in create their own um, version of this palette. 
I don't know who actually started it though. So if you know who started it, please tell me so that I can reference them in my description box because I would like to to credit the originator of this idea because it was seeing all of the I think they used the hashtag real cactus palette or something and I think I saw about three of them before I thought oh, do you know what I want to get in on that and I'd got a load of um, empty magnetic Sort of, you know, folders and holders and palettes and things because of depotting all of my Jeffree Star colours. Mm, I like that. Right, I'm going to use a clean washcloth just to take the colour off of this brush because I want to use the same brush again to apply the next lot. I do tend to get more fallout this side because this is the eye, you can see that super deep creasing there. This is the eye that got pulled around by the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old. Um, so I do struggle an awful lot with fallout this side. I don't really know why I grabbed a fan brush to do that with. That was a bit daft, really. Right. I'm going to go into the pink, the Makeup Obsession shade on the top row. Now, if you're going to blend two colours together, Start off with half the brush covering the colour you want to blend with and half of it off on your lid that hasn't got any colour yet. Unless you're doing an editorial when you want like a really delineated line between the colours. But if you want them to blend together, start off by blending on top of the colour that you want to blend it with and you'll just find you get a much softer, smoother blend. Then you can pick up some more pigment and run the colour further up the eye. I do struggle here and here where I get super dry patches. Um, and I'm trying out a new retinol treatment which is giving me extremely flaky skin but I'm guessing that's a good sign because it's at least sloughing away the dead skin cells but while my skin gets used to it it's uh, let's just say it's a challenge I do apologise for not having had a film up on Tuesday. Um, I've had a lot of very, very bad pain days all in a row, combined with the heat. Um, and even before I was, you know, disabled because of chronic pain. I, um, I never used to cope well with the heat, it used to make me throw up. I, I've always had to keep a bowl or a bucket beside the bed because if it gets too hot at night, I wake up and the first thing I do is lean over and throw up before I can get out of bed. It's just the way my body reacts to being too hot, basically. My face sweats a lot, but the rest of my body doesn't really it's quite one of my mates you don't sweat much for a fat bird do you believe it or not that was a compliment 
Right, um, I'm going to go into I'm going to go into the sort of corally orange that I've chosen from the again makeup obsession range. Just tap off well, and again blend it into the teal and blend it into the pink. Going to look like a multi-coloured parrot by the end of this. And do you know what? I don't care. And yes, I do go out looking like this. In fact, we need to go up to Mother Hall's when the hobby finishes work. Because there's a wasp's nest up by her shed that needs dealing with, so hubby's got the powder. So I need to shoot up there tonight so he can be Superman. He usually gets the foam that just fills the nest up and traps them all in there. Um, and no, we don't do it to bees. If it's bees, we get one of the local beekeepers to come round and get them. But wasps, we just... It's the only time I've known him as a Buddhist to actually kill something. <laughs> So yeah, we'll be doing that later on tonight. These are blending really nicely together. I've forgotten how much I like these. Right, I'm going to go into the NYX lilac -y show or lavender shadow. But again, I'm sorry, I haven't got a name for. But then the whole point of this is you're pulling colours that you already have in your collection rather than buying something new which to me doesn't even really represent what it's meant to be representing. I deliberately didn't put a brown in here as well. People know my feelings towards that. That's why on my pick series that I do, I always say you can't add a colour if it's not there. Because I used to get so frustrated of people getting a colourful palette and going, there's no brown, I'm going to have to get one of my other palettes out to do my brown transition shade. Why? Why not do a teal transition shade? never have understood why people seem to think that if you haven't got a brown you can't create a look. It's blending in really nicely with that orange. Holy orange. So have a think about the colours that you've got in your collection. If you haven't got them as singles, you can always just lay a succession of palettes out and pick certain colours from certain palettes. Fortunately, I had the colours that I wanted in singles, so that was fab. Right, I'm going to go into... I'm torn between the yellow and the mint. I think I'm going to go into the mint because I've used yellow a lot lately. So this is the Makeup Geek, the old one. I'm going to run this all the way 
down the inside there. Now obviously because the shadow is that bit older it is going to take a little bit more work to build the pigment up but it does show you that you don't have to keep chucking powders away. I regularly sanitise all my palettes anyway with isopropyl alcohol spray so that there's no nasties growing on them. I can see some of the, the um, fallout flying across in front of my eyes from the fan. It's quite amusing. That's super, super pretty. I'm going to go into um, the Colourpop, the Team Captain, the Deep Green. I'm going to use that right in the crease. Now if you've moved your crease, this is the point that you follow the new line that you've made. And I'm only taking it about halfway along and then coming back again. And I'm going to pop a little bit of this just on the outer third of my mango lid. Just to give us a nice little bit of definition there. I like that. But then I like this Team Captain car a lot. I bought the um, I bought the Team Captain one along with um, three other Colourpop shades a while ago now when I wanted the Gemini palette but couldn't fold it from Melt. So I basically pulled out the colours that were calling to me from the palette, i.e. the olive green side, and just basically made my own palette. And then um, when I was buying some of these individual sort of empty magnetic palettes, um, some of them came with some shades in them and one of them was Team Captains. I've actually got two of them. So just to show the point, these are the four that I bought to Duke Gemini. which I've got in a little Colourpop quad. I have used those in a look, but if you want to see me do use them again, then just let me know and I can do another one for you. Or just search back for Gemini Duke in my tutorials. Do you know what? I'm really liking how this is turning out. I'm one of these people who I don't really know what I'm doing until I sit down and start doing it. Right. I'm using my Obsession Fit Fix Extra Hold Makeup Fixing Spray today to moisten the um, shimmer. 
that I'm using. Now, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. This is just a pad with some micellar water on just to tidy up a little bit of this fallout. Just so I can see where I'm going properly when I'm doing the lid. I don't like using tape because if the tape is sticky enough to stop shadow from going underneath it then it's sticky enough that it's going to pull and tug at the skin which you don't want. So I'm going to go in with a nice little flat I think this actually is a lip brush and I'm going to start off by going into the silver from Coloured Rain. Look at that. Um, I always wet shimmers regardless of brand, just helps to minimise fallout. Right, the ferrule is now wet so tuck it into your knuckles and spin because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here loosening the glue on the bristles because then you're not going to have a brush you're going to have a stick right so I'm going to use this this is why I like using lip brushes to get right into that inner corner and just drag that up and out just for a real pop of brightness on that inner corner and to pick up on the iciness of that mint that we used. Hmm. Dry the brush. Go back in and pick up more pigment. I've really got into duping palettes ever since I duped the Muerte one with Kaylee my 24 hour clock buddy. Um, I've got really into this. I've actually duped the um, Raw Beauty Christie Pure, the colour side as well. So I should be filming with that soon. Right, now this side, because of these deep creases, I do have to deal with it differently. I do have to stretch the lid out. So I stretch it very gently, just far enough to straighten out the creasing otherwise what happens is rather than being blended onto the lid like I'm doing here the pigment packs loosely into the crease gently letting go um, and then throughout the day it sort of gets in my eye falls down my face it, it's, it's not a good situation but only stretch your lid out like that if, like me, you already have super, super deep creasing there. Otherwise, you will bugger your lid up and you will not be a happy chappy. Right, I'm going to go into that Vertex shade from Lethal Cosmetics. Love Lethal's formula. Love to be able to get more, but they are rather expensive. So I shall wait and see what sales they have on come November-ish time and you know, Black Friday and all that. And now I'm going to use this green. Just to fill in the remainder of the mobile lid that so far didn't have any colour on it. You can see how much my lid moves there, right? That's why we do the Vini's Waltz when we're blending. Using the very tip of the bristles, just going to smudge over where the two colours meet there. And the same thing in this outer edge here. Like so. Again, dry the brush off, go back into the Lethal Cosmetics shade. 
So, as I was saying, what have you got in your collection? Which colours would you choose if you were doing a cactus inspired palette? Have you got colours that are similar to the ones I've used? Can you dupe the palette that I've done? I will put pictures up on Instagram of the palette once this film goes up with the names on it um, and if I think on I'll list them in the description box so that if you want to compare them to shades you have in your collection and see if you can dupe my palette if you can, I would love to see what sort of look you would create using the colours that I chose. I would really, really love to see that. But likewise, I'd also like to know what you would choose if you were making your own. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you just while I put some base makeup on. Um, Given how hot it is, I may skip the foundation. I may just do um, concealer, powder, um, blush. I might use a, a shimmery blush and just minimise the amount. Plus, of course, if I'm going to be wearing a mask, it's all going to be coming off on that anyway. So, Right. For me, it's going to be a little while till I can talk to you again, uh, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be completely instant. So, hi, hello. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. I have done my usual soap brows using the Pink Honey uh, Honey Glue in Strawberry Sherbet. It's literally soap in a pot with a hole in the middle that you stick your spoolie in. Uh, they recommend that you wet your spoolie. I recommend you don't because that leaves the brows slightly sticky. So then when you get the other end of your brow brush, dip it into, in my case, Team Captain, the deep green that I used through here and just brushed it through. This has a double benefit. The brows being sticky gives the powder something to cling to and the powder then sets the brows in place. Giving you all my little tricks and tips. Right, so I'm going in with this flat topped brush into Team Captain and I'm just going to run that along the low lash line like so I struggle getting things to stay in my waterline I've had some luck with the BH um, what are they called power pencils um, so I'll, I'll give one of those a go but off camera because I have to put them in and then wait for a bit of my eyes to finish watering okay using my this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette flat topped and chunky a little bit like me I'm going to dip that into the bright bright yellow and use that to buff out the lower lash line. Yeah, literally in terms of face makeup, I've used concealer and I used my shape tape for that. I used powder, which was my Coty Air Spun translucent extra coverage. Um, and then I didn't do um, contour or anything 
and I use the Luna Beauty Mars highlight which looks like that it is way too deep for me as a highlight but I used it as a shimmery blush which it worked as really quite nicely And then I'm going to get my Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut Highlighter. So in its original black packaging, that shows you how old it is. And this is a lip brush that's off of eBay well over 10 years ago now. But it's great for popping a shadow up under the tail of your brow. Like so. And also in a corner and I like to bring mine along under the tear duct and just blend it in and fade it into the lower lash line. Now I've used a shimmery blush so I don't really need to add highlight but this is me I'm gonna add highlight anyway because well it wouldn't be me if I didn't would it? Let's be honest now Right, my loves, I'm going to pause you again one last time. Um, I'll stick a colour in my waterline, mascara, lippy, highlight, do something with the hair. And I'll be back with my finished look. So, again, for you it's going to be instant, so don't go anywhere. Hey, my lovelies, I figured as I've gone super bright, I would pull out my unicorn headband for the day. Just because partly it keeps my hair off my face, which helps keep me cool, but also it looks pretty cool. Um, yes, of course, I put more highlight on. We knew I was going to, it's a foregone conclusion. I popped a bit of this BH Power Pencil in Teal on my waterline. And I used the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. The Lippy is from a new indie brand I've been trying, FW Beauty, and this is in shade Tamarind. It's a really lovely, rich, chocolatey brown. Um, again, I'm trying to dupe a lot of Jeffrey colours. Now, this isn't quite dark enough to be a dupe for Dominatrix. But likewise, it's not, or it's too deep to be a dupe for Daddy. I think it's more of a dupe for Top Shelf, one of the um, mini ones that he did. The oh, when he did the second thing of nudes, and he did, there were two shades in there that he hadn't released as full size, and one of them was Top Shelf, which. I will admit I did buy off a friend of mine because she didn't want it and it's it's pretty much this shade so if you are looking for a nice chocolate brown this feels super lightweight on the lips yep kiss proof um, obviously I'll see how it wears through the day but if you see me use it again you know I'm going to have liked it so my cactus palette. Obviously, I like all the shades because, well, I chose them. And if I don't like a shade, I don't keep it in my collection. It either gets given to somebody else because it's maybe not my colour, or it's, you know, I've, I've got quite a lot of neutral tones which I, I rarely use. So friends come around I'm like yeah take your pick you can have you know I've got, that one's very close to that one that one's very close to that one if you want them you can have them kind of thing um, so I knew I liked all of these shades um, I'm really pleased with how a the palette looks and b how this has actually turned out I think initially I was going to use that yellow on the upper lid 
but I'm really quite glad that I saved it now for the lower lid instead. It's it's given a much softer look to the upper lid because I think it would have overpowered the other colours on the upper lid. Um, that being said, I really like my multicoloured parrot look that I made from my version of the cactus palette. So, as I said earlier, um, oh, before I ask you that, if you're a 4F regular, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots, but they're leaving the films in your inbox or in your feed, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. Uh, once you've done that, a quick like would be nice. And for a comment this time, let me know what you think of the palette. Do you like it? Would you dupe this palette? Do you like it enough that you want to try and dupe it with shades that you've got in your collection? If not, which 12 shades would you choose from either individual shadows that you have or from palettes? Which 12 shades would you choose to best represent cactus or cacti? I would really, really be interested to know what colours you think of when you think of the cactus plant. Hmm. And you know I read all of your comments and I try and answer as many of them as I can. Um, sometimes I don't get notified of them so I answer them a little bit later than others but I do get round to all of them eventually, I promise. That being said, if you are new to my channel, I'm scratching my nose is a nervous habit that I have. Uh, it, it's not me fibbing to you or taking some kind of illicit substance through the nasal passages. But if you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there was something you liked, even if it is just the unicorn um, headband that I finished off with. That being said, it would be lovely to welcome you to the 4F family. It's really easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications. And you keep saying yes and all notifications every time YouTube asks you. And then hopefully you'll get told, I don't know, one in four of my films maybe. Hubby is subscribed to me and the other day he got a notification for a film that I put up six weeks ago. Really helpful for the algorithm there, thanks YouTube. Um, so there's an awful lot of other films on my channel that you can look through. I've got tutorials, I've got product reviews, uh, I've got challenges, I've got collabs, I've got tags. Uh, I've got my Zodiac series, I've got my Photo Inspiration series, um, I even read you my favourite poem. So there's bound to be something on here that will interest you. So if you're looking for a little bit of me time, basically grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and just relax. But if you choose the relax playlist, be prepared to get talked to sleep. Uh, and, and, and getting a good rest if that's what you need right my lovelies as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time bye for now